So Ethan here with 6x6 Archery. We're gonna do a little product setup on my Venom Pro and uh, I'm putting on the SL sidebar mount. Really easy to put on. Just thought it'd be fun to make a little video of it and then I'm gonna go over the rest of the stuff that I'm taking on the elk hunt next week. So stay tuned guys. All right guys, so first things first, what you're gonna find in the package, it's already assembled. You don't have to do anything uh, for your stabilizer. I give you the little barrel nut to attach. So we're going to attach that to the stabilizer and then attach the mount to the bow. And I haven't introduced you guys to the bow yet. So this is what I'll be running this year. It is a Hoyt Ventum Pro 33. We're running the Tommy Hog. And actually probably one of my favorite things I've put on so far is this tree limb quiver. Hard mount right to the bow. Uh, he has adapters for most bow brands out there. Super impressed with this quiver. Rock solid. Got the Hamsky hybrid on there. Um, very impressed with this year's setup with the Raptor peep. Uh, it's It's been shooting really good all year. I'm really excited to take it on out. So one of the nice things about this mount is you can choose which side it comes off the bow. This screw right here you take out insert it <clears throat> on the riser here they have just a slot for this mount so you'll take the screw off insert it in whichever side that you want and then rotate it and adjust it how you want it to sit as well all right guys moment of truth so we've got her mounted up as you can see it just slides right into the riser there the bolt is in here on the other side tightened on up I loosen this top bolt here and that allows us to rotate our uh, our stabilizer to whatever degree we want it at and it's pretty slick so I like to just set mine I mean you can put the numbers wherever you want really but <clears throat> well, it does have a little notch here in the riser so I just started at zero there and then um, play with it from there but I usually run it over I don't know if you can see very well on here, but about to the 35. So I will take this and I will turn it um, what would be clockwise towards me, the shooter, because I like to run that stabilizer a little bit more of angle like so. But yeah, it's a moment of truth. So we just go over here through the barrel nut on the end of the old stokerized. Um, then we just slide her on in there, tighten it on up. So obviously this is a quick detach and it's on. So it's it's pretty slick when you're done with it. Just loosen her up <clears throat> and then you can just slide it on out. So now we are all mounted up and ready to go. I'll shoot this a little bit and play with the play with the position of it, but I already know where I tend to like to have it mounted and I mean you can you can pretty much mount this thing however you want it which is really really nice but I like to run it a little bit closer to the bow and just enough to offset <clears throat> some of this weight on this side and I like it coming back you know this this riser that Hoyt came out with this year is just balanced really well I've shot Matthews for a long time and really like those bows as well but having this little stabilizer sit so low as well as this sitting low uh, with their riser shape has really just been a real winner this year all right guys here's a pro tip keep your friends close right always have a buddy in the shop this guy right here behind me sal island park mule deer super fun hunt um so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over the gear i'm taking elk hunting we're not gonna go super detailed into it but some of my favorite things some of the things I'm looking forward to using. And um, this is my first year hunting Utah. I've helped hunt in Utah before, but my first year with a tag in my pockets. All right, so far as gear is concerned, <clears throat> already been really impressed with this. Got it on a good deal this year. Picked up the Pelican Air bow case. Very impressed with this bow case. It's super light. It's heavy for a case, but for a bow case this size, it's extremely light. Um, waterproof has the airline seal uh 
has the TSA locks on it when you're traveling. It's really nice. Has the soft case style separator inside. Bungee cord attachments. You can adjust it all. It's it's practically a modular case. They include your extra baggies and you can put your arrows. You can hang them here. It's big enough where I just leave my quiver attached and holds everything just fine. Some guys will put this down over the bow once it's packed up and then put some of their clothes or extra supplies in here. It's a it's a big case, super light. Lid stays up, which is a big thing for me. I don't like when they flop all the way over on the ground on the other side. So this lid stays up just like this. Um, really impressed with this case. So <clears throat> for my pack, I'm using the Everly Stock F1 mainframe. Uh, what I have it set up with, and you'll see it all put together at the end, um, but I have one Super Spike duffel and two bat wings. Uh, it, it's just about perfect for me. So, um, and then as far as the other big items that I have, uh, running the marsupial gear, vinyl case uh, with their rangefinder holder and the, the pistol attachment on the bottom, the good old Leatherman on the side. <clears throat> Really looking forward to using this. I've, I've used it all summer. It's been really handy, fits well, it's comfortable. Also from Marsupial, I'll be using their elk game bag set. So it comes with a small, a medium, and then four large uh, game bags. Uh, these are made out of a synthetic material, USA made material. It's, it's pretty cool, um, washable and uh, you know, he recommends that, you know, once you've used them, uh, to clean them, just soak them in cold water, you know, in the cooler or whatnot, takes the blood out pretty well, but they're really strong. Everything on them is reflective. They've got extra tabs. Probably my favorite part about them, besides just how light they are and how nice they're going to pack down is there's no seam on the bottom. They're folded and then, uh, double stitched, I believe double stitched, um, up the sides. So you don't have to worry about the, the bottom breaking on them. They got the paracord drawstrings on them, so you can just hang them right up with the meat inside of them. Uh, pretty impressive material already. Uh, we went over the Zaleo, used that yesterday, really liked it. Uh, <clears throat> I've got the Vortex High Country 2 tripod. That'll be coming along. And then let's go over what's inside the pack. So, favorite thing about this duffel, the way I like to hunt is go and, you know, set up your little spike camp or whatever. I can just take this duffel right off. It's got a handle on the bottom top, and then it actually has a strap, so you can take it to the gym if you want. But inside, we've got the rhetorical stuff, you know, all the, the food, the gas, the water filters. Uh, and the way I like to organize my bag is with more bags. So, I have an emergency bag, right, which just has your... You know, your your whistles, your flares, your your radio, your fire starter, your <clears throat> just tape, you know, whatever you need. You think you might get yourself in a pickle. Got the first aid kit. <clears throat> Can't go anywhere or function without the Ignite on a hunt. So we got a couple packs of the Ignite. Got a Soto stove. Been really impressed with this. Thing I like about this stove is it is all stainless steel so you know compared to some other stoves that are made out of uh you know like titanium which is cool because it's lightweight and whatnot or aluminum uh this one is all steel construction and i really like that you know it the weight is so negligible that i don't even care but it's just tough used it shed hunting in the snow uh i used it quite a few times and it's it's great uh, it has the valve, you can control the flow, yada yada. Um, probably one of my favorite things about cooking that I bought is the MSR stand that goes on your pot. Super handy in the snow or the mud. Never seem to have level ground in Idaho or in Utah. <clears throat> Obviously got bear spray. And, uh, you know, in case some, some rowdy campers try and disrupt our camp, I'm not really worried about the bears. Um... Extra broadheads, the Annihilator 125s we already talked about. Got the knife sharpener. And then in here 
is the pocket shower, the, de the deodorant, stuff to try and control some, some stink, um, keep us uh, as unstinky as possible. And then, let's see here, I've got the wind check, powder, extra batteries. Big thing here, extra batteries, 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 batteries. Can't say it enough. Put your batteries in the Ziploc, take batteries for your sight, if you're allowed to use them. Take batteries for your rangefinder and your flashlights. Take your batteries with you. All right. Probably one of my favorite things I'm taking this year is the Marmot Tungsten One Person Tent. Use it shed hunting. Love this tent. The nice thing about it, compared to a bivy or a larger tent, it's just big enough for you. There's not a lot of room to move around in, but you can sit up. You know, you can move around a little bit, play cards if you need to or something. The other nice thing is, is it has the rain fly that goes out over the side of the tent. So all this gear, the bag and the bow, can all sit underneath that fly outside of the tent and not get wet. Uh, it also comes with a footprint, which is nice. Not all tents come with their own footprint. Um, so shout out to Marmot, love their stuff. They do a good job. All right guys, now we're doing a quick overview. They have one mainframe. Uh, along with the extra gear that's left in there. So the nice thing about this frame that I really like is it's it's got a shelf in it and uh, you know everyone has different styles. For me, this works the best. Um, I like heavy duty equipment and every stock is, is pretty heavy duty. Uh, I've been really impressed with it. I've loaded it up pretty heavy, no problems. Um, one thing I could say, uh, and, and you can buy a, you know long ones, but I do wish that they made longer straps uh, stock for the Everly stock. Um, because, you know what? Who doesn't need an extra two foot of strap? So, um, <clears throat> it just comes in handy. Now, the bat wings are super cool. So everything is made on Everly stock to be able to zip to the frame, right? So they have zippers on both sides. So you zip one bat wing, and then you take that bat wing, you zip it to the next bat wing and take the next bat wing and so on and so forth until you decide to zip it back to the frame. I've had up to three on here. works really well. The cool thing about it is once you have them zipped on there, you kind of create this little hole. It's good for stuffing your tripod, spotting scope, uh, tube, whatever you want to stuff down there or just holding extra things. It's kind of nice. Um, <clears throat> so basically what I do is when I go hunting, I take the bag off, leave it, everything I can, I leave at camp, right? And then I reload the pack, and the pack will contain two bat wings. One bat wing is the kill kit. So in the bat wing, what I keep is obviously hunting license, bags, um, and then the game bags will go in there, the knife, and tape, the tape on the tags. That's that's where I'll keep in one of the bat wings, and then you know, if, if there is something extra that I need, you know, like if I know I'm going to be out late or something like that, I'll throw in a an extra flashlight or some fluorescent tape for marking trail or for blood trail. The other bag, the other bat wing, its job is just to hold water. So I can put a bladder in here. I can put a three liter bladder in here, and then run. The nice thing is about it is it has the exit. So I can run the tube right out over the strap. Um, or what I put in mine is I just put a 40 ounce Yeti in there and then <clears throat> my water filter. Uh, and I'll also put in an extra bottle of water. Um, just depends where I'm hunting, obviously. Be smart about that, don't run out of water. Um, and then as far as my water filter is concerned, I'm actually pretty excited. So I've got the Life Straw water filter. So this obviously needs to be um, back rinsed, but uh, it's pretty cool. It comes with its own bag, but the filter can go on to a bottle, go on to a hose, you know, uh, in between your pack and your uh, hose and bladder set up. You can throw this in there or through the gravity filters. It's all the same filter, I believe. Um, but you just fill up the, the water bottle or the bag, screw this on, squeeze it on through, and you got filtered water coming out the other side. They do recommend you wash it obviously the first time. I believe they say five times um, and then wash it often after that, you know, back wash it often. 
uh, as you can, as you remember. The water doesn't need to be clean to backwash it with, but it does get the particulate matter out of there. Um, so yeah, guys, that gives you a little bit better idea. I'll set the pack back up and then show you guys how I put it all together. All right, guys, there it should be. I'll pack it back up. Super spike on the back. <clears throat> you run the straps through the molly webbing on the back of the bat wing. So not only do they have zippers, but they have the molly webbing. So you just stick those to the front, tech tip, keep them zipped together. When you zip them on, it's kind of nice because if not, they'll zoom all over the place. Like I said, you get a little bit of space. I didn't put this all the way down, but it gives you an idea. Get that little cubby in there, which is kind of nice. The other thing I like about Everly stock is their padding is really nice. Super thick on the belt and the straps. So that's, that's a pretty good plus for me. Um, <clears throat> obviously you have the load lifters. You can adjust the height of your pack right here where it sits, which is pretty nice. Um, the only thing that's missing out of this is water. And then I also have these two bags that go in here. So clothes, sleeping pad. Um, I basically use uh, a liner and uh, like a Sherpa bag that my wife made. Um, when you're like me and you're over 250 pounds, you tend to sleep pretty hot. So uh, yeah, I don't worry about bringing a big sleeping bag with me. I stay really warm at night as it is, so that works for me. Then we have two last things I want to talk about. Uh, like Dalton said, you know, lightweight is key. Be prepared, but keep it light. You know, your water is going to be heavy. Um, in total, my pack without the water right now weighs about 27-ish pounds, um, which is pretty good for me. I, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, you know, we'll, we'll add the water weight on there, but I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I try and keep my packs, you know, as close to 40 pounds as I can. And really when I'm actually hunting, most of this stays at camp and that's just the bat wings. So it goes from 40 pounds ish to, you know, what I, I think the, the frame itself is like five pounds, seven pounds. So it goes to like 15 pounds when I'm hunting. Um, which is pretty nice. The other thing I want to show you guys is just the arrow setup I'm using this year. Um, so as you can tell, we're, we're doing the FMJs. I've always liked them. That's what I shot my first bull with, so I'm sticking with them. Uh, <clears throat> I like the gold tip ballistic collar for the 300 spine. It fits just perfect on, on this shaft. And um, we basically got it set up pretty pretty commonly uh we got the three fletch hybrid 26s from aae uh, put our our little logo on on the wraps uh, this arrow is about 550 grains uh with the you know the tip included so it's a good weight um and hopefully we'll just punch it right on through an elk and and that'll be the next video you guys I uh, get to see or one of the ones in the lineup for this year. All right, guys. So hopefully that gave you a little bit more of a look into what we're taking. Um, you know, none of us have done this for, for decades, um, but we have tried to do our research, uh, done a little, uh, you know, uh, learn from failure before, uh, learn the kind of gear we like and don't like. Some of you may be wondering uh, why I decided to just use a, a hard bottle for my water. And there's two reasons for that. One, the elevation that we're hunting at will get cold and we are likely to run into some snow eventually. Um, <clears throat> so I like being able to boil something and keep it hot while I'm up there. And the Yeti being 40 ounces fits just right into that bat wing. It's a good amount of water to carry all day. It'll stay cold or hot, obviously. Uh, the downside for me with with like platypus or camelback or any of those things where you have a bladder unless it's insulated you know i mean either your water freezes in the hose or it's just lukewarm when you drink it and uh i'm not a big fan of that nothing against them i i use them when i work out or when i'm uh 
you know, rucking or anything like that. They work really good. Uh, but for me, for hunting, having that ice cold water or, or that hot cup of, you know, I don't know, whatever you're going to drink while you're out there is pretty dang nice. Um, <clears throat> so if you guys have questions, throw them in the comments section. If you have suggestions, throw them in there. Uh, we are not above uh, learning. We, we appreciate the comments, uh, good or bad. Uh, it, it only adds to people's success and and like we've said before here at six by six this is a family thing this is a this is an important thing for um you know the people all over the world but especially especially us here in the in the united states that we have the freedom to get out there and do this so we might as well enjoy it and learn from others who have done it and been successful and and we'd love to hear hear your guys' thoughts and and uh, we appreciate you guys for following along with us we'll see you on the next video